안녕하십니까 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung-won. Today I'm going to talk about M. Ron J. As you all know, M. Ron J. is related to the medication on bone and it is osteonecrosis of the jawbone. M. Ron J. Let's look at the definition. In the past, we called this Ron J because osteonecrosis of jawbone occurred in relation with bisphosphonate. However, as of late, it is related to other medication. That is why it is called M. Ron J. The following three conditions need to be met to be defined as M. Ron J. Anti-resorptive or anti-angiogenic treatment and no history of RT to the jaw or metastatic disease to jaws. Exposed necrotic bone or bone that can be probed through intraoral or extraoral fistula that lasts for more than eight weeks. If these conditions are met, it is called M. Ron J. The reason why I'm talking about M. Ron J is because when patients taking osteoporosis medications such as bisphosphonate come in, dentists don't know what to do in a lot of cases. Therefore, today briefly, I would like to discuss about the guidelines provided by the Korean Society of Osteoporosis and the Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology on medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. As shown, if you look at the pathogenesis of M. Ron J, there are different factors and mechanisms. It is a result of a complex combination. It is difficult to finger point exactly which is the pathogenesis, but it can be related to altered bone modeling due to visphosphonate, leading to suppression of osteoclastic bone resorption and depressed re-osteogenesis. Soft tissue toxicity, as well as inhibition of angiogenesis, accumulation of constant microtrauma, inflammation, infection. If these are shown in combination, M. Ron J results. This phosphony suppresses bone turnover and this causes reduced osteocytic viability. Infection, resorption, and necrosis can result. If these are shown in combination, the symptoms can surface. If you look at the epidemiology of M. Ron J, the prevalence and incidence is not that high. If you look at the various studies at home and abroad, there's actually very little likelihood of M. Ron J resulting due to low dose of bisphosphonate or denosphop. It's approximately 0 0.001 to 0.01%. According to a recent study with 15 hospitals in Korea, osteonecrosis of jawbone in relation to visphosphonate occurred 1 out of 2,300 patients, so 0.04%. It's not that high likelihood. But it does require further research. The incidence is not that high. How can we treat M. Ron J? I've talked about the four items. In private clinics, I believe the option you can take is conservative management. You do oral hygiene care and you have the patient use antimicrobial mouth rinse. If necessary, you prescribe antibiotics and provide conservative treatment. The management itself is not about removing the lesion, but it is to alleviate the symptom 
It is to ensure that the patient is symptom-free for long term. This is conservative management. Surgical management should be done at university hospital or more specialized organization. When you do surgical management, it involves removing sequester and more aggressive surgical intervention is involved, such as wide jaw resection. In this case, the lesion is completely removed and soft tissue primary closure is very important. As of late, in MRONJ patients, we use RHBMP2 or platelet-rich fibrin or PRF to do treatment. These treatments are utilized in order to consider use of BMA or bone modifying agent, you need to ensure that soft tissue healing is sufficiently done. As a private practitioner, I believe you should focus on conservative management. If the symptoms progress, you need to refer the patient to university hospital to get the patient better result. As a method for treatment, recombinant human treatment is recommended for MRONJ. But this is not for exercise within private clinic. You need to refer the patient to dental hospitals. Let's look at risk factors leading to MRONJ. First is systemic and second is drug risk factor. It may be related to patient age and it occurs more frequently in female than male. It's problematic if the patient has diabetes or smokes. If the patient has been taking steroid for long term, it can be problematic as well. In relation to bisphosphonate or other medication, if you use drug with higher potency, if the patient received the medication via IV, or if the patient has been receiving a medication long term, it can be problematic. Beyond osteoporosis, other potential issues could be involved with a malignant tumor or multiple myeloma or bone metal like breast cancer. If you look at these risk factors in a large sense, this is a graph on potency of different medications such as zolendronic acid and alendronate. You don't need to memorize it. Drugs with high potency can be a problem. There's much higher possibility of MRONs if the duration of medication is over four years. If you look at local risk of factors, according to Korean studies, MRONs occurs in relation to extraction. It, over 50% of the time it is related to extraction, at times it is related to implant or denture. If the denture does not fit well, it can be a problem. There can be many factors. One of the questions that I receive the most is how can I prevent MRONs? If the patient is taking bisphosphonate, do I need to have the patient take a drug holiday? If you look at the literature, there is no defined definition as to what needs to be done in terms of drug holiday. There is no clear evidence. There is a little bit of controversy in my case. I follow the guideline where there's two to four months of drug holiday. That is my recommendation. In the case where drug holiday is mandatory, is it's related to potency of bisphosphonate, but if the patient has been taking bisphosphonate for over four years, you need to have drug holiday. It may not be four years, but if the patient has been taking steroid for long term or has severe diabetes or is smoking, if the patient has multiple high risk, even if the patient hasn't been taking it for four years, I think you need to have the patient take drug holiday. If you take drug holiday and suspend medication and then move on to extraction, soft tissue needs to be fully healed before medication should be prescribed once again. 
제약제 투여하는 것을 고려할 수 있다고 말씀드릴 수 있을 것 같습니다. Prevention of MRONs is very important. There is a significant reduction in MRONs incidence in patients who receive dental evaluation before being prescribed medication. More so than osteoporosis patients, it can be more problematic for cancer patients. Before prescribing medication, you need to have the patient to take dental evaluation first, and you need to remove teeth with bad prognosis. If you treat periodontitis ahead and do prophylaxis, in most cases, there's no problem. To summarize, I'm questioned all the time about how to treat patient taking bisphosphonate. Basically, I think two to four months of drug holiday needs to be taken for patients who have been on medication for over four years. You need to look at simple procedures such as extraction and see how it heals. You need to observe first and then move on with treatment. In terms of MRONs, it's difficult for private practitioners to actively treat MRONs. I think you need to focus on conservative treatment. Today I have looked at guidelines provided by the Korean Society of Osteoporosis and the Korean Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Implantology. Thank you for watching.